This is the Air Force Missile Test Center, Cape Canaveral, Florida, September 1957. These four launching sites are assigned to flight tests of the Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Nearest the camera is pad 14. Here, during September, two major tests were run on Atlas Missile number 6A, a static firing at main stage, and on 25 September, flight tests. Except for this narration, all sound effects in this film are heard just as recorded at the time of the event. The ready room at lower right. A final briefing is held before each test. Each segment of the contractor's test team reports on his area of responsibility. The chief test conductor assures himself that all is in readiness on the test stand and that the bird itself is ready. Missile 6A. Here, separate components must function with absolute reliability. Everything must be checked before the missile is left alone on the stand. And it is the job of these engineers to remove the element of human error. As the final proofing out of all interlock systems, the missile was held down for a sustained main stage firing. fired on Friday night, 20 September. Plan duration was 36 seconds. The engine timer cut the engines at 35 and 9 tenths seconds. Data collected during this run showed all systems performing satisfactorily. The missile was ready for flight. On 25 September, the red ball at Cape Canaveral's north boundary went up to warn ships offshore that a launching was scheduled. The countdown was underway for the second Atlas flight. Even though every part of the missile had been completely checked, as completely as possible on the ground, only the added dimension of flight could prove actual performance. There were 1,768 items in the countdown procedure for 6A. This is one detail of hundreds in pre-flight preparations on the launching pad, installation of the engine igniter. Meanwhile, at other installations spread out over the Cape, preparations were underway to support the test. This is the Azusa site. X and Y band antennas in the background are slave to the optical tracker for the first few seconds of missile flight. After tracking has started, the system locks on electronically, follows the flight trajectory automatically. A high-frequency radio beam is transmitted to the missile in flight. The airborne component of Azusa amplifies and retransmits the signal on a different carrier frequency. This provides frequency data by which the velocity and position of the missile can be determined. Also a part of the Azusa site is the impact predictor, which continuously relates the missile's flight path to its point of impact. Position and rate data are fed to an IBM brain which charts its predictions on these scaled maps. A trace line indicates the point where the missile would fall should shut off or destruct occur at any given moment. One mile from pad 14, General Electric Guided Missile Control Facility number one. For this test, 
the GE technicians were interested primarily in setting up procedures for checking performance of the jet test oscillator during flight. Purpose, to investigate flame attenuation interference with transmissions between the missile and ground stations. In later Atlas tests, this facility will be concerned with missile guidance. Inside central control, 9,000 feet from Atlas Pad 14, this is the sequential timer used to synchronize various support functions of the test range. In the control room, these vertical panels present a continuous plot of the missile's flight path compared to its planned trajectory. Here, range radar is added to the other tracking operations. The range safety officer's console is nearest the camera. Every component is rechecked for accuracy on flight day. The meteorological section provides current and predicted weather information. From camera and theodolite positions surrounding the launch area, optical measurements and a visual record of flight performance is provided by Radio Corporation of America as part of its space support contract. High-speed cameras at the pad provide a detailed record in milliseconds of the launching. All support activities are paced by the contractor team inside the blockhouse. These men are in direct control of all preparations for launching the missile. The test conductor's control console is in the foreground. These consoles remotely control liquid oxygen, fuel, helium, and liquid nitrogen flow from storage tanks into the bird. All electrical and hydraulic pneumatic power to the entire complex can be controlled from these stations. As part of their base support contract, Pan American Airways Security Police have the responsibility of clearing the danger area around Pad 14. Liquid oxygen supply pipes set up a distinctive wail as they are pre-cooled before LOX is fed to the bird. Uh, 
latest check, Azusa. Azusa, go. Silvat. Silvat is go. Bacon. Bacon, go. JTO. Range telemeter. Uh, still no go. What is it? Has the deviation changed? Uh, no deviation change. Uh, this is satisfactory with conveyor. We will proceed. That's all right, Roger. Uh, telemeter and quality? Otherwise, it's good. Go. T minus three minutes and counting. Switch to on. On light on. Detonated missile 6A, 63 and 6 tenths seconds after liftoff.
launch a release operation, duplicated the successful performance of the first flight missile. Total weight, 181,600 pounds. Total thrust, 265,400 pounds. The autopilot again successfully demonstrated its ability to hold the missile to its predetermined trajectory. Early in the flight, the system moved the thrust chambers minus 1.9 degrees in pitch and four-tenths of one degree in yaw to correct for a crosswind of nine miles per hour. After 32.6 seconds of flight, there was a propulsion system failure. Thrust chamber pressure fell to approximately 35% of normal level for about three seconds, followed by a complete loss of thrust. Telemeter data indicated that this was caused by a helium line failure. This may have resulted from vibration, heat, or a combination of these two. Maximum altitude attained 16,300 feet. Velocity 450 miles per hour. Duration of flight from liftoff to destruct by the range safety officer 63 and 6 tenths seconds. During flight, information from 135 separate sources was telemetered to ground stations. Information on heat, vibration, pressure, and performance of all the interrelated systems in the missile. <coughs> Out of the 135 measurements attempted, 131 were successfully recorded. Immediately following a test, all flight information is forwarded to the Data Reduction Laboratory at the contractor San Diego plant. Here, the data is taken from magnetic tapes and translated into readable form. The subcarrier frequencies are played back and duplicated in the form of oscillograph, photooscillograph, and digital printout. Fourteen days after flight test, all important information had been compiled in the flight test evaluation report. This book is the life story of Missile 6A. The information it contains is the basis for important design changes to Missile 10A. This third flight missile represents the next step forward in the expanding program of flight tests, backed up by a broad base of research and development on the Atlas weapon system. Thank you. 